Welcome to episode 3 of the Stoneworks Lua Tutorials. In the last episode, we learned how to draw on the screen, and in this episode, we're going to learn how to handle touches on the screen. Now, I again suggest using the Stoneworks Lua IDE that is linked in the description and following along. Let's start with some more advanced tips. These are just some things that didn't really fit anywhere in the other videos, but they can still be useful. When defining a variable, you can define it as a local variable, meaning it is only accessible in the function that you define it in. This can help with not making a clutter and help preventing overwriting variables, but all variables are global by default, and this doesn't come in use that often. The next tip is using a semicolon to end a line, so you can do more on one line. In order to enable and receive touch data from the screen, you will have to connect the composite node on the screen to the composite node on the Lua script. If you have additional info that you need to send to the Lua script, you can wire the touch data through the write block. Make sure that you start your number at channel 7 and your bools at channel 3 in order to prevent collisions and overwrites with the data. Here are what all the channels are for in the composite from the screen. Starting with numbers, 1 is the screen width, 2 is the screen height, 3 is the first touches x value, 4 is the first touches y value, 5 is the second touches x value, and 6 is the second touches y value. For bools, channel 1 is if the user is touching with one button, and 2 is if the user is touching with two buttons. Now the double touching ability of the screens can be confusing, but the way that it works is when you press with say E, bool 1 is made true, and the X and Y of your press is sent on the number channels 3 and 4. Then if you press with Q while holding down E, bool number 2 will be made true, and the X and Y values for your second touch will be sent on channels 5 and 6. It is important to note that in-game it is impossible to do a dragging feature as the X and Y of the touch is not updated until the screen is touched again. So that's the basics of how touching works in Stoneworks. But now how do we use it in order to make touching things perform actions? Well, first we have to make sure that we use input to receive the data in our onTick function. Then we can make a function to handle our touch checking. So when bool1 is true, I call my function and send it the x, y, width, and height of the area that I'm interested in checking. Then the function checks if the coordinates of the touch are inside the area. If it is, then it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. This is a simple way to check whether or not the user has pressed a certain area of the screen. However, this can have some issues. So let's say you want the user to hold a button in order to increase a value. Using the strategy I just showed you, which we will call the instant touch method, would work, but what if we want to have a toggle button? Here you can see, when I use that previous method, the toggle button toggles rapidly. Do you know why this is? It is because every tick the onTick function is called, and the user is pressing the toggle button for more than one tick. Then this if statement is still true, and this function still returns true. I'm going to explain a new method that we'll call the pre-touch method. So if you need a toggle button, the best way to invent it is to add a variable like pre that checks if the user was touching the screen one tick ago relative to the touch checking. So here you can see my if statement now says if pre and not press then. So it is checking if the user was pressing and is no longer pressing. This way the user can't accidentally press a pop-up that comes up after they touch. And you can see I set pre after I check whether the user is touching. This way the setting of pre is always after checking for touches, meaning pre will only be up to date one tick after touching the screen relative to the touch checking code here. And here is an animation to demonstrate that because I know it sounds a bit confusing. So if you need the user to hold something, just checking if they are touching is fine. But if it is a toggle of some sort, you'll need to check somehow that the user is not touching the screen for multiple consecutive ticks. So now on to the example for this video. On draw has remained untouched from last episode, where we learned how to draw all this stuff on the screen. So let's look at this touch function at the top. You can see it is very similar to the function I showed earlier in this episode, but I swapped out the touch variables for a table in order to reduce characters. Then in onTick, 
I read the input to check if the user is pressing and set the variable press. Then I get the screen width and height as well. These fuel calculations are from the first episode, but this if statement is new. You can see I'm using the pre-touch method where I check if the user was touching and is no longer. Then I loop through all the values in the fuel pumps table and using the touch function and the same x, y, width, and height from the buttons when they are drawn, I check if the user is touching a button and then toggle it. Then I get the touch data, I'll put all the values in the table, and set pre after I have checked if the user is touching. And that is all there is for this script. In the next episode, we're going to get a bit more advanced with touch controls, and we're going to look at maps as well in order to make a system that tracks your vehicle and tells you the distance you've traveled.